Come on into the ditch. I'm your resident ditch witch, Tara Tyne, and we're about to get witchy, whether you like it or not. So welcome back to week two of what the actual f*** is <coughs> going on. Last week's video was an awful lot about the panic of us trying to get into the house, and we are still working away on that, but a lot of you have been asking, you know, I think I might have frightened you a little bit with the present state of things. Okay, yes, we did have a bit of black mould, but by kind of keeping the side clear and tidy, we're able to keep an eye on that situation. It's a little bit hilarious that I thought at this stage in the process, all I'd have to worry about was getting curtains and blinds made for the mobile. As you can see, I did actually make a set of curtains, which I was gonna make some blinds to match, make a video to show you how I was doing that. Hi Dave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but as it turns out, that is the least of our worries. Yes, we do have a lovely set of curtains. Glad I made them, very useful. But for all the other windows, we have essentially just resorted to using up our extensive collection of fleece blankets, which I've been gathering for years now, holding them up with pegs and look it, it's doing grand. I thought I'd just give you a realistic look at the situation here. We've moved the sick bed out into the sitting room. Those of you who've been here from the start will remember the absolute madness of me buying three bags of sheep's wool online. Felt in a rug out of it, but I'll tell you, smart as a fox, that's one of the best moves I ever made. It's keeping us nice and toasty, it's nice and breathable. Uh, we're just trying to find the balance at the minute between using natural fibres and synthetic fibres, regulating the temperature inside the mobile to minimise the build-up of condensation as it's getting colder outside and we're very tempted to just whop on all the heaters we have here in the mobile but that can actually just make the situation worse too. So we're trying to strike our balance there, finding our way but we're making it. And on other fronts there are little miracles happening all around us which are making life that little bit more pleasant and comfortable and stress-free. For example, after two or three months of trying to get the ESB, the electricity supply board, to come out and cut down some trees which were encroaching upon our electricity lines, they landed in this morning and now we have two birch trees, lovely burnable birch trees. And Dave has even found a guy in Longford Town who will give our chainsaw a bit of a servicing for us and uh, maybe also give Dave a quick demonstration in how to safely use it. So as soon as we're feeling better, we're gonna get on to that and then there'll be no stopping us. Although we are still open for ideas on what to do with this, uh, this pile of crap in the middle of the field. This was all overgrowth that had been cut down before we bought the property. Uh, it's hard to tell there by looking at it, but that's actually just a big pile of cut timber, which now has a load of crap growing up through it. Lots of willow, of course, willow everywhere on site here. We've got lots of nettles and other stuff growing up through it. A couple of people have recommended that we do a controlled burn of it. So, I mm, don't know about that. That seems a bit scary. It's a little bit close to the mobile. It's very close to electrical lines. But everyone seems to be of the opinion if we just contact the local council and the fire brigade, let them know what's happening, it should be fine. On the other hand, it also seems like a bit of a waste of good firewood when we are badly in need of as much firewood as we can get. And we do have a lovely woodshed to put it all into. It's currently full of pallets waiting to be uh, broken down by Dave as soon as he gets a free minute. But we're a bit busy at the minute, Dave, aren't we? I got broke wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and for now, it is time to get on with our work. I know we've been banging on about this poly fella since last week, as far as you're concerned. <laughs> but I only actually finished that video yesterday. I'm shooting this now on uh, on Thursday, so this is it. We're going to spend as much time today as we can just filling in cracks in walls gaps in walls and making the, the surfaces a little bit smoother and more secure. I see Dave has the lights set up here. Are we putting up the chipboard or are we going to leave that for today, Dave? We're going to leave the chipboard until we get the cracks done because we need ventilation on the go. 
while we're working with the potty fill and says that's why we've got two okay. masks here for safety as well okay doke so um good thinking yes. ever the safety man appreciate that dave no worries so i'm just gonna crack this window and if they get this a good stir it's the biggest fucking bucket of potty fill you ever seen in your life it is that is an industrial sized bucket of potty fill no crack shall go on fill today dave <laughs> <laughs> I'm still feeling rather weak and trembly, much to my annoyance. My God, it's hard to admit that I'm sick and just accept that fact and give in to my body, but it has to be done. So I'm gonna take the comparatively easy job of uh, sitting down and doing the lower portions of the wall, and we're gonna chance Dave up on the ladder to do the bits that are higher up, because he's just got a little bit more strength than I do at the minute. So let's crack into it. sure the noble art of plastering is any poorer for my loss but I'll tell you what with the Queen of Irish Blues Mary Coughlin here singing us songs about swimming with your knickers off in Galway we're feeling pretty invincible right now dying for a dip <laughs> dying for a dip Dave are you <laughs> oh we'll take you out for a wee dip later so we will plenty of shucks around these parts so Dave's playing a blinder here, just uh... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> just fitting a new uh, handle and bar on the door so that we're able to close it. Yeah. Well, we could close the old one, but <laughs> for how much longer was the question? Like? Yeah, and getting it open again is uh, something you like to know you can definitely do. Yeah. <laughs> I got the new handle. Lovely shiny new handle there, look at it go. Yeah, some action on it, so I just need to widen the, the whole thing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's a technical term. So Is it, just, yeah. yeah. That's it. She's close, she's close. Oh, she's very, you're very doing close. it, Dave, you're doing it. Yeah, it's, it's, and as for the polyfilling situation, well, somehow the room actually looks messier now than it did before we started. That's progress. But yeah, Dave's right, it's progress. It's all heading in the right direction. It was a little bit unsettling to feel massive lumps of plaster just bubbling and dying to come off the wall, but eh... Uh, we weren't going to let that happen. And when you've got the world's biggest bucket of polyfilla, it would have been rude not to use most of it. I just have one more little bit to do now behind the door whenever Dave's done. And uh, I think that's the polyfilling done. The instructions tell us it's going to take 12 to 24 hours to dry. I think in our case that's maybe a little bit optimistic, both because I was slapping it on so thick it felt like I was practically 
replaster in the walls, but also because it's not the warmest, driest room in the entire world. But at least hopefully, maybe tomorrow we'll be able to come in and get the fire going again and get the whole thing dry. Dave's uh, cement job on the fireplace is drying nicely, so yeah. We're confident. We are expecting uh, Darren, the electrician, out to put some power into this room for us today and to change out the fuse box in the main room. Now, we haven't heard from him yet, and we don't know if that's because our reception's so bad or maybe he's not coming today, but I do know that I am just about ready to tap out for the day now. It's four o'clock. I had a late start. I allowed myself the luxury of... A slow morning, but the light's beginning to fade, as am I, so I think it'll be into the bed. For me, I'll do another bit of editing work on some of my backlog of video work. You might also be wondering, am I planning on renovating this entire house in my pyjamas? And the answer is yes, I am, and no, I don't give a shit. I have energy for renovating, or I have energy for beautifying myself. I do not have the energy and time for both. Let's keep it real, you know? Space pirate to control central. Do you read me? Just when you think things can't get any weirder. And you see the swimming pool that has formed between us and our outbuildings. Dave has been deployed to empty every bit of sand and sawdust that we have into it. He's already tried poking holes with a pitchfork to encourage drainage like he used to have to do, playing hurling with Nave Menina, and they had to dig out the pitch before practice. Ah, uh, the sawdust is the job. The issue you see with a swimming pool forming between us and all the outbuildings is that it's undermining the foundations of our woodshed, our outbuildings, our gas tank, and in fact, the mobile home itself. This thing is precariously propped up and levelled on lumps of breeze blocks and bits of stone we found around the field. And if that rain keeps up, I'd be a little afraid of waking to a bang and uh, the sudden sensation of everything in the mobile rolling to one side. And that's not including what it might do to our water, electric and gas connections if such a sudden shift was to occur. Oh captain, my captain. Look at him go. My absolute hero. I discovered the issue when I tried to make a quick trip to the outhouse there a little while ago. Thanks to my sister Neve, by the way, for my birthday present this year, which Dave is now wearing. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in for you there. It's uh, slumping around like quicksand. So he's been at it for about 20 minutes now. Sorry about the quality of the footage. I can only hold the camera with one hand. I'm holding my torch, my phone with the other. We're doing our best to capture the action as it happens here in the ditch. Dave is now forming a soup. I knew the problem was bad when the water got into my hiking boots. We did in our own way contribute to the problem by putting a layer of damp proof coarse plastic 
under the mobile there recently. We thought it might help with the damp and condensation, or at the very least, maybe some of the cold rising from beneath. So we've probably created a sort of a, a funnel for all of the water that has fallen around the mobile to be directed down into one of the worst drain spots on the whole site. How precarious our very existence on this site is. But also, it's rather exciting. <laughs> Before this, we were just sitting in there watching telly like schmucks. Can you hear that? I guess about a foot of water there at the deepest point. Dave's possibly futile but valiant attempt to improve matters. We'll check back in tomorrow and let you know how we got on. Unfortunately, I didn't get to check back in the next day as I ended up in an ambulance on my way to hospital instead. My symptoms were getting worse instead of better and I needed a few hours on a drip. Thankfully, I was discharged later the same day and have been improving massively since then, although my energy levels are still quite low a fortnight later. Thanks to everyone for your kind words and support and being a good girl, drinking my water and recuperating in bed ever since. <laughs> But the show must go on, and our next move was to get a digger on site to carry out some essential works. First up, the beautiful stone walls in front of the cottage had to come down to make room for the digger to do the work it needed to do. Next on the agenda was getting our water and electric ducts sunk so that they don't freeze whenever winter comes around. Once that was done, our digger got busy creating the trenches for our French drains, which has already made a massive difference to the damp inside the house in the intervening two weeks. The filling in of the drains will be happening this coming weekend, which is very exciting. We also got our digger to use the soil he dug out of the drains to level out the dip where the swimming pool occurred earlier in this video and although it's mucky and in need of surfacing, at least it's not flooding quite as much as it was before. There was still an hour or so left in the day once all that was completed and so our digger set to work deconstructing the aforementioned pile of crap in the middle of the field. We were delighted to find that much of it is, as we suspected, perfectly cured firewood, although we still have to get the woodshed emptied in order to make room for it. But for the time being, we had bigger fish to fry and it was over to Dave and Alan. So here we are up in the attic and this evening we're going to get it insulated so there's a bit of cleaning up to do there. We have Alan down here. Hey, how's it going, everyone? So between the two of us, we're gonna get cracking on and get this done in no time at all. So as well as insulating the attic, I got a wee frame made for it there. So I have a bit of OCB board to put as a wee trap door to the ceiling but I'm going to take you up now and we'll have a look at the job myself and Alan did on the insulation. So as you can see there we've got the whole attic done in the one day or at least this room anyway and that'll keep us lovely and toasty over the winter. I have to say thanks a million to Alan he's an absolute star coming down and giving us a hand and we hope to see more of him in the future. So things are moving along nicely despite my very slow recovery and some really appalling weather. At time of filming, i.e. the day before this video goes out, we've got a yellow weather warning in place and the mobile home is rocking like a ship on the high seas. But we're much better prepared for winter than we were a month ago and it's full steam ahead as far as renovations are concerned. Sorry I only managed one video for Ditchoween slash Halloween slash Sowin this year. It didn't pass by completely unmarked in the ditch though. Since we obviously have uh, more on our mind this year, unfortunately, 
then the celebration of Samhain, which I usually love and make a lot of time for and put a lot of energy and effort into. This year it was kind of it was kind of all up to what what we could do in about 10 minutes and uh, obviously you know we got some sweets for the trick-or-treaters if they're coming about yeah. we're both testing clear with covid now so it should be safe and uh, dave has gone the extra mile and provided some uh, bonus pumpkin content <laughs> look at that I noticed the steak sitting there, someone just left a half a steak randomly hanging out of the ground there. I said, let's make use of that. And I think Dave has done a wonderful job. I was busy uh, touching up some of the polyfilla that needed redoing. Cracked a bit with the room drying out, so... Dave uh, did some fabulous spooky carving. Oh, we can't really see the candle yet, Dave. We'll, we'll try again when it's dark. But hopefully now, if there are any trick-or-treaters, and I really don't know if there will be, but... If there are, they'll definitely know... to call down to us. Don't forget to hit subscribe for more fun and witchy adventures. I upload as often as I possibly can, and you're not going to want to miss it. Slánagas Bánacht, goodbye, and good luck to you.